Hello, my name is Irvin, also known as Kubumet. Are you someone who is looking to work help desk or wants to learn about IT? You're in the right place because in my videos I'm teaching you how to do help desk. It's very simple, it's just that there's a lot to learn. So let's keep learning and just keep this series going as we are. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I know I am. But today we're going to continue working tickets. As you can see, we have 25 unresolved tickets. We're not going to be able to do all of them, but we're going to do as many as possible today uh, because we are kind of behind on quite, a, quite some of these. So let's do this here. We're going to work tickets from the eldest to the newest, which is something you're supposed to be doing. But before we start, please do me a favor in the comments below. Just say hello, hi, or present, sort of like in the class, just to let me know that you're uh, attending and watching my videos. And it's a big motivational thing for me. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And with that being said, uh, yeah, let's let's continue. Where, where did we left off? I think I had a ticket that was left open that we need to follow up on. So I think it was, well, let's see here, assigned to me. And it was about variant playback. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I will put a link up in the right corner because all these videos are connected and in series. So if you haven't watched the previous video to know what happened with this, then uh, please do. All of the videos are going to have timestamps or I don't know what, what it's called nowadays, but like if you look at this video right now, you can, you know, click on the timeline and skip to different topics, if you will. And I guess this is really good for people uh, that just want to look for specific issues and help them resolve. Like if they're working help desk and they're watching my videos. By the way, let me know also if you're working help desk right now and you watch my videos just to uh, have a source for solutions of different things. I'm curious if that's the case. I know a lot of people watching are just people wanting to get into help desk. But for those reasons, I am putting timelines uh, on so that way you can just literally just select on the topic you want to watch because the videos may be really long, you know, and that's perfectly fine. So this one was about variant uh, recording uh, voice, but not screenshots. So variant playback, just to kind of touch on this again, this was in the previous video, variant playback is a screen recording software. So if somebody is using a computer, you can record everything that they're doing, including video and audio it's used mostly by call centers uh, to record what agents are doing so what we did i suggested uh, to the user to reinstall well in this case a tech because this came from uh, madhur sanap madhuri sanap and i suggested to him to uninstall and reboot the computer it's pretty much all you can do aside from making sure that the correct version of the software is being used otherwise if you don't have correct software installed on the computer and the server is set up for a specific version and that's not that version then it's not going to work and i didn't get any response and for those reasons we're going to close this ticket so i'm going to add internal note here and i'm going to say issue resolved by software reinstall slash reboot Irvin. so i'm going to leave it at that uh, every time i reply to customer in these in this ticketing system it should be sending an email with notification and that's pretty much what i can do with some of these tickets because a lot of these tickets are submitted by users and they are they're wanting advice on stuff or have just questions they're not necessarily typical help desk tickets uh, however people that do submit tickets a, a lot of people that do submit tickets they also present it in a way where it's a problem um, as if the user is um, reporting the issue which is great because it makes it more even more realistic for people who are training for help desk all right we got one last from one last ticket from md alam and we're going to work this uh, as, as best as we can. If you watched my previous video, we know that Alam was, he's basically, his tickets were basically A plus questions or uh, some kind of certificate questions. So, but we're going to touch on it because I don't want to uh, not uh, use this content as an educational thing for everybody. 
it says here but outlook is not updating is not accept incorrect password password reset from office 365 but still not working what is the troubleshooting so i'm assuming there is an issue with logging into the outlook and that there's a description here user log into computer have the internet but outlook is not updating a pop enter password i don't know what that means uh, if password enter is not accepting so it's incorrect password right and it sounds like you've reset the password at office 365 every time every time you get an issue when somebody can't log in it's nine well i, I was going to say 90 percent of the time it's the user's fault uh as, you know assuming that you know that the password has been reset but here are some options that you have uh number one in in this issue in this issue you reset the password however the issue comes up as incorrect password when user types on it so what do you need to do you need to use logic here check to see that the user is typing in the password correctly check to make sure that you've given the correct password to the user number three make sure that the user is not logged in somewhere else with the old password because that could be locking out the user from the office 365 because if you try too many times the wrong password so if you use the old password too many times it can lock you out which could also be happening and then for those reasons you may have to wait between 15 to 30 minutes for it to automatically reset or you can go in manually and unlock them the same thing happens with the active directory and again i've talked about this many times and shown how this is done uh, and uh, but since this is kind of a th theoretical question what if what are the troubleshooting steps these are the troubleshooting steps right this is what he's asking so you know you reset the password and it's still not working then the issue has to be with the user not not typing it in correctly or you know they don't have connection because if, if you move from that like you try to do everything you can when it comes to the password like what else can you do you, you reset the password, you give them the new password. If it's still not working, they're either not doing it correctly or there's something wrong with the computer. And the only thing that can really be wrong with the computer, well, I should say most likely the thing that could be wrong with the computer is they are either on VPN or they should be on VPN, but they're not connected to the VPN. So therefore they're not connected to the network and therefore they're not connected to the domain which controls their password. Now, this is Office 365, so this is web-based. So chances are of that actually happening is kind of unlikely. But it could be set up in such a way where it still would not work unless you're connected to the company's network. So check that. Check to see if other websites work. Check to see if other, other products, Microsoft products work. Like, instead of just Outlook, check Word, check OneDrive, check everything else that uses the same password. So if the issue is still with the Outlook only, then reinstall Outlook if it's the desktop version. If it's the desktop version that they're using and it's only Outlook, everything else works, then try the web version of Outlook. Okay? So those are the troubleshooting steps. That's all I can think of. Hey, if anybody else got more ideas, feel free to put them in comments below. Okay. So I'm going to reply and close the ticket so i'm going to step one check the password make sure user is typing in the correct password and that they are using the correct password meaning you need to check yourself as well right make sure you've given them a correct password we can't just assume all the time that it's it's user's fault because it's not all the time user's fault it's not um, as simple as that what did i say for second step uh, make sure they are connected to the company's network vpn physical Physical meaning, you know, you're there at the office plugged in with a network cable, right? 
Number three. What did I say for number three? Check to see if password works for other Microsoft products. For example, Word, Excel, OneDrive. If, if working fine, oh yeah, that's fine. That, that's just a step, right? And then we got step four. Let's scroll this up a little bit. Okay. If using a desktop version of Outlook, Try reinstalling it. Now, this is still assuming that it works fine for other products, right? Reinstalling it and or try the web version of Outlook, also known as webmail. You know, it's not just Outlook that uses this. Other, you know, websites, other products use webmail, webmail, right? Well, we all use, right? <laughs> you know, if we, anybody who uses the internet uses that webmail. But, you know, in a business environment, people are, people are used to having Outlook as an installed application on their computer. However, you can use it as a webmail on the internet, on a, as a URL on a website, right? So check that. And that's all I can think of right here for now. And again, we're going to close it here because we've done a lot of tickets uh, from Alam here. And again, thanks for submitting them. Uh, but uh, we're going to close it because, uh, you know, we've done a lot of them. And this is not a necessarily a good example of a help desk uh, a ticket necessarily and I'm only saying because he submitted other tickets that were just you know a plus certification type of questions so I, I need to close them because he submitted a lot of them but typically you'd want to make sure that this is working so connect to the computer a user's computer and and uh, see what they're doing see what they're doing when they're trying the new password see what they're doing make sure they're doing it right and try all of these things Try all of these things that I've mentioned. You as a technician, as a help desk technician, try all of these things. Make sure all of this is checked before you close any tickets. You know, Again, I'm just closing this because I've received a lot of tickets from Alam. And, uh, and, um, and, and yeah, that's, that's that. So we're going to move on. All right. We got ticket here from Madhuri uh, Sanab. Thank you for submitting these tickets. Uh, I say this a lot, but I apologize if I'm mispronouncing anybody's name uh, incorrectly. I apologize for that. Laptop won't connect to display screen or TV through HDMI. And that's it. There's no subscription. So, you know, number one, every time you have an issue where something can't connect to a screen, whether it's a laptop or a desktop or your phone, you can even connect your phone uh, to your TV if you really wanted to. In this case we are talking about specifically HDMI. So it's a laptop with HDMI connection on it. You obviously want to make sure that HDMI cable is plugged in correctly. That's always number one thing. And then number two thing is to make sure that TV is powered on and that the TV has selected the HDMI as the input. Because you have like, I don't know, I've seen TVs for like, we'd have like four or five HDMI ports. So you have to, you know, use the menus on the TV or on the remote and make sure you change the input to the HDMI that you plug that into. How do you know which one that is? Well, you can experiment. You can go input one, input two, input three, input four, or you can simply look where the cable is plugged in in the back of the TV and it will say input one or input two. Make sure that's selected. 
if still not working, then you need to go in and make sure that TV is seen by the laptop as, as a second monitor. So here is display on my main computer, right? So here's just display settings, right click desktop, select display settings. And if you want to see multiple, multiple displays, then you have to scroll down here and then select advanced display settings. And with the drop down here, you can see if there are more than one. So right now I just have one connected. So if I drop down there, just one, there is no, there are no two of them, right? So, but if I connected another one, and I've done this in other videos, it showed exactly this. There will be another one that shows up. If it's not showing up, then it's a physical connection, right? If there is nothing else showing up, then it's a physical connection. So check the cables and power. However, normally, if you go back, multiple displays will show up. And then from there, you just have to make sure that you select to expand. Uh, extend I'm sorry to extend the second display onto it or I don't know clone the display you'll have settings in there that will allow you to do this and change different resolutions and all of that it would all be in here right yeah, under display settings as simple as that and if you don't see it then it's not connected properly if you do see it then you may have to adjust the resolution you may have to either extend your main this main desktop to it remain your main screen to it so that way it's one giant screen or duplicate or i think it's called clone displays so then you'll have that option and once you do that then it will work okay so that's uh, that all right so i'm going to i'm going to add internal now we're going to pretend like we've resolved this issue and i'm going to say checked well first of all did i say hello this is <laughs> this is Ervin with PC support. You guys probably seen me this do this many times, but don't I'll never forget to introduce yourself. I know I've talked to Madhuri before, uh, but uh, Sanap, but uh, you know maybe you know maybe he doesn't uh, remember me. So I'm gonna introduce myself again, and that's perfectly okay. And. Uh, Let's do this. Just in case you're watching my videos for the first time, may I take control of your computer to check? Uh, I don't know. Let's say display settings. I don't know. You can word it any way you want. And this is just to show you guys how you could talk to the customer. So instead of internal note, internal note will not be seen by the customer will not be seen by the customer. So it's a reply to customer as if you're talking to them. And then you do all the things that I just showed you, right? So this is just as part of training, as a reminder that you want to always take control of their computer and have a look if possible, right? In this case, you would log into their laptop using their IP address, their host name, which is their computer name, uh, or you can send them a link and I've, I've been asked this many times on how I do it, and that's okay, I'll show it every time. You can use remote tools. It's gonna to depend on the company that you're using. I use Dameware, so I can actually create a link, send them a link, and this will allow me to take full control of their computer. There are other tools you can use, but that's what would happen. So that's the communication with the customer. I, I prefer verbal over the phone, but you don't have to. If you can do everything over text, you know, some kind of messenger or even through the system here, that's fine too. But I'd say at least minimum of using some kind of messenger like Slack or I don't know, Jabber or something like that. I don't, it doesn't matter. You can go use Google, Google, whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter, you know. So I'm going to pretend like I've solved this issue. I'm going to say uh, resolved. issue by changing windows settings i'm going to list steps that i've done checked to make sure cables are connected and power turned on and i'm just gonna say 
resolve the issue by changing Windows settings. Windows display settings. How about that? I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to close it. Again, never close tickets unless you've resolved them. And, and, and I'm, I'm making exceptions here because we have a lot of tickets and I need to go through them. You know, we have still 22 tickets and there's going to be a lot of videos. By the way, if you want to submit new tickets, please put them in the format where it's as if you're submitting an issue to help desk. You need help with something. I really appreciate it. First comment is going to have my first comment from me that's pinned. It's going to have a link to my ticketing system where you can submit these tickets. And eventually I will talk about I will talk about your issue in the video. So when you do that, please don't display, please don't use your uh, personal information as in like your phone numbers, your, you know, you may have to use your email, which is fine just to register just so you can submit a ticket, but don't provide any phone numbers or anything, any personal information, guys. I've seen that a couple of times and that's, and that's fine if you didn't know. But I don't want your personal information to be exposed to the internet. Some, you know, simple, simple as that. You know, I, I'm just trying to look out for you guys too. You know. So if you have to use fake number, that's fine too. That's perfectly fine. Just don't use your real information. They could, you know, you know, you can use your real name. It doesn't matter. It's no big deal. But don't use your like anything else. You know. But if you don't use a real name either, if you want to call yourself Mickey Mouse, that's fine too. All right, new ticket, variant screen recording stopped working, able to record uh, audio calls, but not video with variant screen capture model. Please assist as soon as possible. So this is the same ticket as we had previously, and it's the same troubleshooting step. Reinstall the software, reboot. That's about all you can do. Variant is very finicky. I've dealt with variant many, many times, and I occasionally still do, uh, but, you know, if... If these steps don't work, make sure that their profile is set up correctly. And I've talked about this in a previous video. Make sure that they're set up to be recorded because at the server level, there are still things you have to do to set this up. I don't have experience with the server level because I'm not a guy that, you know, I'm not a, a variant team guy. I was never part of variant team because they have a team specifically for that, for that uh, system that deals with recording people screens i don't care i work as a business systems analyst you know what i mean so which is something totally different uh, but when it comes to help desk this is all you can do reinstall software and if it's still not working forward to variant support team and i understand that madhuri sanap could be working for variant team but you know again i've talked about this already three or four times so make sure that the correct software is installed correct version reboot and if still not working, then there's a problem with the software or their profile. Okay. I'm going to reply and I'm going to say, just because we already worked on this, please check notes on previous ticket or watch the video. Yeah, I really, there's really not a whole lot else to talk about this. The, this software either works or it doesn't, you know. And, it, you know, go to the software distribution uh, thing that you have uh, for the company and make sure that it installed successfully. You know, make sure it installed successfully. Yeah, I, I've talked about this. Yeah, I'm moving on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but thank you very much for submitting more tickets. And if you want to submit other ones, yeah, I more than welcome. I more than more than welcome them. Hey, this is something new. I haven't worked with this specific issue before. So that's fun. Guys, it's okay to not know something. You can always research and if you have general experience knowing how things are can be resolved, you can resolve unknown issues. And that's the whole point of learning as much as you can. Right? You learn as much as you can and over time you realize that everything is very similar. All systems are very similar. Computer science is very similar. Whether it's this software or this hardware, there's going to be some similarities to it, if not majority of similarities. So at, for those reasons, it's okay if you come across something brand new, like I've never heard of. Well, I may have heard of Sonic Wall Net Extender. I think this is a just a uh, network extender. 
Uh, well, we will see. So here it is. Can't connect to Sonic Wall Net Extender. So it's a net extender. So just by looking at this net extender, some kind of repeater maybe, some kind of network component, that's okay. Uh, Robert Leon. Thank you very much, Robert, for submitting this. I really appreciate it. I think I've seen comments from you. Um, it's it's good to see you. I need help connecting to so I need help connecting to Sonic Wall next to it. My printer is not printing on my computer, but it works for my coworkers. So right now, what I'm assuming here is that you're not. Well, a couple of things. You, you know, your your my printer is not printing on my computer. That's first thing I would check here to make sure that your printer is installed correctly. And I'm assuming here, since we're talking about net extender, that it's a network printer. So we have to make sure that your printer printer is added correctly. So go to printers and scanners, add a printer. Now make sure you go to the printer if you can, and you can print out settings on it, or if you already know what the settings are, meaning the host name, which means that it, it's a printer name, or net the network ip address the ip address so if you go to printer you can actually print out if it's like one of those better printers and what i mean is like a business printer you know that one that sits like in the middle of floor or a printing room or something like that if you go to settings and you print out the settings it will give you the ip address of the printer so if you go here and you search and nothing comes up which is perfectly fine you can say the printer that i want isn't listed so select that and i'm assuming it's a network printer so click add printer using tcp ip address or host name that's what i do you know and if it's something else select something else okay in this case i'm going to assume that it's a tcp ip uh, address or just a network printer basically um, i'm sorry i clicked away from that no i, know, I didn't hear this and and go through the motions of adding it if you search it like like it's searching here it chances are it won't find it or it will list like 10 or 15 different ones as long as you're connected to the same network and then go through here and then type in the you know ip address and if there is a port you can leave this query the printer automatically select the driver to use which is fine printers can also also push the driver to your computer to install it so anyways do all this make sure that the printer is installed correctly now back to your ticket you said, it, and, and here, I'm going to assume you've done this, but if you haven't, make sure you do that and use the correct IP address that everybody else is using. And of course, correct driver name for that specific model of the printer. Very important. And this is all with the assumption that you're allowed to print, that you can even add printers. But, if, but it works for my coworkers. So that means that they've done something or have something on their computer that's done correctly. You know, and I'm not talking down to you or anything like that. I'm just saying the settings are done correctly and we all make mistakes. I've made mistakes where something is not done correctly on my computer, but for some reason for coworkers, it's working fine. So check their settings, go in if possible, or if you can't ask them to send you a screenshot off their printer, off their printer in here, you know, whatever's installed, whatever's installed send them uh, make sure that you see the same thing and compare so now you're doing some troubleshooting where you're comparing well what's the difference here is it the ip address is it the computer name uh, i'm sorry is it the printer name or is it the printer driver this and that and you can also look at the which printer driver it is that's installed i don't know if i have i don't have any printers unfortunately connected here but if you have a printer connected you can right click and uh, look at the properties of it and you'll have different settings and this and that so you can see different settings so you know this is you know this is part of troubleshooting you compare and see what that is now going back to your sonic wall net extender i need help connecting so we got a couple of different things here and i'm not sure if they're related but they might be so let's see what sonic wall net extender is it kind of seems like these are two separate issues. I'm going to go to Google. Again, it's okay not to know what something else, what, what something is. All right. 
here we go. This website comes up. Looks like this is the correct website for it. Okay. Net Extender. Here we go. Sonic's Wall SSL VPN Network Extender allows you to provide easy and secure access to Windows and Linux users. This transparent software enables remote users to securely connect and run applications on the company network. Users can upload and download files, mount network drives, and access resources if they were on the local network. So Net Extender here is a SSL VPN. So it's it looks sounds like it's just a VPN. So like for example, I talked about Pulse Secure before. It kind of sounds like it's some kind of a VPN connection that allows you to do all this stuff. You know, basically have you know ca have connection to the company's network just like a VPN software. So it's VPN software. I don't know what specifically the issue is with the Sonic Wall extend net extender. You need to let me know. And for that reason, I'm going to say here, hello. Can you please well here, let's do this again? we we have to I've never talked to Robert before on in this ticketing system. This is Irvin with PC support. I have your ticket about net extender and printer issue can you please provide any error messages you get when using when using Sonic Wall Net Extender. I hope I spelled all this right correctly. I think I did. Net Net Extender. Yeah, I think I did it. So the reason I'm asking this is because we need I need to know. Well, we also need to know. We as in, you know, all us collectively, me and you, the viewers, we need to know what is the issue with this VPN net extender. This VPN net extender. We know that you have to use SSL, which is secure shell connection. We need to know what is the error in, in the sense, are you able to even log in? Is this an access issue or is this post login issue? I need more details in order to kind of uh, elaborate and rectify this issue. And that's a gr that brings me to a great point. You as a help desk person, or just a tech support, whether you any type of tech support, engineers, all whatever the title is, you need to get more information. You need to ask questions in order to get to the answer as quickly as possible. I personally like to do it either over instant messenger because I can get a instant screenshots because screenshot can tell me much better and much quicker what the issue is instead of a user trying to explain to me what the problem is. I have a feeling Robert is actually a tech guy, um, so um, it would be a little bit different maybe to talk, you know, talking to him, but either I want to see screenshot number one and number two, uh, it would be okay to actually talk to them. It would be actually okay to talk to them, whether they're an IT person or a user, to make sure that you get the most information as possible in order to resolve this issue because we need more information we need a lot more information instead of um, i need just i need help connecting to the sonic wall net extender what kind of help do you need uh, number one what is the issue right we don't know what the issue is exactly it does say here my printer is not printing on my computer but it works for my co-workers to me this kind of seems like it's two separate issues but it's in the same sentence. So it might be related to not be able to print. So it could be related directly to this. You know, if you're not able to connect to the net extender, which is the VPN in this case, then of course your printer will not work because it would not be on the same network. I hope that makes sense. If this doesn't work, then this won't work. If it's a printer that's on the that network, if you cannot connect to the network, using the Nectar Extender VPN, then you're not able to access this printer, this network printer that's on 
that printer on that network that you need to connect to. I hope I'm making sense. I try to repeat myself as much as possible. And uh, I don't know, some people like my teaching style, if you will, although I'm not, you know, a teacher, I'm just a guy who's sharing his knowledge. So for those reasons, we're going to wait for Robert Leon to, to respond to me and hopefully he does. And then we're going to get back to this in the in the other in the next video. Moving on. Keyboard keys, keyboard keys. Uh, and if I think this is Paul and Kosi. Thank you very much. I think I've seen comments from you. Thanks for submitting this, brother. I really appreciate it. I think I've seen your comments before. Thank you. Hi, I'm using an Acer laptop. And the issues that I'm having is with the backspace button and the enter button. They are not working. I try going to the device manager to install and reinstall the keyboard driver, but still experiencing the same issue. Unfortunately, with keyboards, 99%, 99.99%, the issue is physical, meaning that there is something wrong with the keyboard itself. Now, this is a laptop. You can open up a laptop and check to see check to see if it's connected correctly and it seems like it is i was going to look up just a you know laptop keyboard uh, i have a video on that somewhere on how to do i have i think i do i don't know i have a lots of videos all right let's just do it laptop keyboard i just want to show you real quick just a just kind of a visual thing and if it's a physical issue, a lot of times I've seen it where it gets disconnected. Oh, here we go. Here's an example of a keyboard, a laptop keyboard. And these connectors can sometimes slip out. Sometimes they're not connected correctly. You see how there's these little notches here? They are basically there they're to be clipped in. And sometimes that clip is not pulled in. And sometimes this part of it will pull out, like a part of the ribbon will pull out which could be the problem. And, you know, for those reasons, you may want to like, if, if you know how to open up the keyboard and see if you can replace it, sort of like this gentleman here is doing. And it's usually, and, and you'll have to get instructions for your specific computer, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, this one kind of seems like you take a lot, of, a lot of things off, but if you decide to do this, make sure you have really good instructions or, you know, get advice from somebody who's done this before, but it's, it's, it's doable. It's doable. Make sure you get specific instructions for your keyboard. Cause I have a feeling that's what the problem is. Obviously the next thing we could be, you know, maybe it's just worn out or maybe it's, uh, you know, you spilled something on it. It's possible. We all eat food next to our computers. We drink and that's perfectly fine. It just happens. You can confirm whether it's a driver issue by basically getting a keyboard, a regular desktop keyboard, plug it into USB and see if that works. And if that works fine, then you know it's not a driver issue, then you know it's a physical issue. So I'm going to reply and say, hello, this is Irvin with PC support. I don't know why I always leave this C lower cap. It's just I don't hold a shift for long enough, I guess. I have your ticket about keyboard keys not working. It could be worn out. You can even pop the keys off. You can pop the keys off if you're very careful and see if there's something stuck in between. So I don't have a good picture, but you can actually replace some keys. So if you want, you can actually, and see if somebody else done it before on your specific laptop. I don't want you just to do it. But it's possible to pop the keys off and then see if there's something stuck underneath because the key itself when you press it it needs to have it has like a little but obviously it has a spring but it has a connector there that when you push it in it the spring pushes the key back but underneath it it's just a switch it's just a switch and uh if there's something stuck in between or something dirty you can possibly clean it yourself i'm not saying you can't that's definitely something that you need to look into not working key is not working i'm gonna say most of the time this 
issue is related to what did I say uh, keyboard itself is either I'm gonna say this either dirty and needs to be cleaned or um, or replaced I'm gonna say however you can try to uh, let's see here um, how should I put this you can try to resolve this problem by making sure that keyboard ribbon ribbon how do you spell ribbon 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 cable there it is English is my second language so please forgive me <laughs> is plugged in all the way so that that could be the case however you can try to resolve or removing those specific keys to see if anything is I'm just gonna say dirty underneath I'm just gonna leave it at that you, you guys can word this any way you want like I said this many times just make sure that it's clear and concise and uh, if I had physical access to this I would try all this stuff if possible but if it's under warranty if the laptop is under warranty then they can just get a different laptop you know this is a issue from just you know Paul and he may not you know he may not work for any company maybe this is just his personal laptop this is why I have these suggestions for him but in a business environment chances are you'd be able to replace the laptop and uh, I'm going to close it because I don't have physical access to it you know if if you're a help desk person and don't have the ability to have physical access to any of this hardware then you may be able to forward this ticket to their local on-site tech that they can go to take their laptop and they can take a look I'm going to say forwarded ticket to local tech support to check to check laptop keyboard yeah I'm gonna leave it at that because that's pretty much all you need to do for an internal note this is not something customer will see but if your supervisor checks it out then you know they will know what you're talking about and normally you know I would forward this and there will be a setting here to forward but since I you know this system that I'm using is not part of the company um, you know it's separate from the company I don't have a, a way to forward a ticket so I'm just gonna close it but let's pretend that we just forwarded the ticket all right moving on all right so the next thing is how to configure a DNS server by reporter named Raji Raji thank you very much for submitting uh, looks like you submitted like a couple of tickets thank you very much I appreciate it all right let's see what this is about how to configure a dns server okay hello could you could, could you please explain how to configure a dns server raji sure thing i i'm assuming you mean on the computer itself because that's pretty much the only time you would configure a dns server and that would be on a local computer as somebody who does tech support or help desk so if you go well, okay, so right, there are a couple of ways of getting to this. If you go to where your clock is on the taskbar and right click the icon for your network or internet, if you will, select open network and internet settings. So there are a couple of ways of changing this. Usually you never have to do this. Usually this is always done automatically unless you're working for a company that specifically has to have specific DNS. Uh, settings are pointing to a specific DNS server and that's usually done on a big uh, private network for example let's say you work for I don't know AT&T 
and AT&T has locations all over the world, um, especially, you know, tons of offices, probably like hundreds of offices, big, I'm talking like corporate uh, places in the United States, not to mention all of their stores and stuff like that. So uh, that being said, okay, let, let me do this again. So right click, open network internet settings, and then you can see the first thing you see here is the ethernet. And this is what you're connected to, whether it's wireless or Wi-Fi, it's gonna show up there. So the first place you can check this is if you select properties right here. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the settings for it right here, IP settings. So this is a simplified version of it, of what you typically see in the IP version four uh, and six uh, configuration that you would normally see under adapter settings. Uh, adapter settings meaning for the, your internet, whether it's Wi-Fi adapter or your physical ethernet adapter that you you know plug in your cable into. So what do we see here? Uh, there are a couple of things we can see here and we're gonna concentrate on the DNS uh, settings here, DNS server right now this adapter is using AT&T local.net DNS server. So for those people who don't know what DNS server, and I've talked about this, uh, I've talk, talked about this many times before. So instead of going to, for example, google.com, or instead of typing in the IP address for google.com, you can just type in google.com. And that's what DNS does. It does that for you. So you don't have to remember the IP address for google.com because it can change often too so you don't have to worry about uh, you don't have to worry about remembering that typically websites you want them to be on a, an a static IP address but Google and big sites like Microsoft and they do change occasionally and for those reasons you need a DNS server that will handle that that will know which what the new location of the IP address is. So you don't have to worry about IP addresses. You don't have to type in address for google.com. Here, let me visualize this for you a little bit more here. It's not a typical, uh, this is not a typical help desk ticket, but this is good to know. And I'm just going to explain it to you. Ping google.com. I think I've done this in a previous video or maybe the video uh, before that. Right now, uh, Google shows up as IP version six, which is right here. So that's the IP address for google.com. So instead of you remembering that, who can remember this, right? To get to google.com. All you have to do is just remember google.com. And this part of it, remembering the IP addresses is handled by a DNS server. And DNS server can be anything. It could be google.com. Google has their own DNS server. In my case here, it's AT&T. And that's the name of the server. So if you want to change that for some reason or add more, uh, this is something you may have to do uh, for some odd reason. This Again, this should be done automatically and already set up in, in a business environment. But let's say you work for AT&T and then you want to add more DNS servers for AT&T, which may reflect uh, the IP addresses for like internal websites. So let's say AT&T has AT&T local.net. This may not be something that you can reach when you're on the internet. So, you know, or something like it. It might be an address that's blocked from the internet. And for those reasons, you need a DNS server that will handle those on a local network only for AT&T people that work for AT&T. And for those reasons, you may want to add another DNS server that will handle that instead of you having to remember the IP address of ATT local. Uh, dot net in this example. I hope that's fairly easy to understand. And if you want to change that here, if you select edit and then select manual, um, you can simply make changes too. In this case, you would have to add the IP address and well, obviously, you know, you pick which one you want. And in this case, let's pretend that we're adding Google here. Here is our IP address. Oops, sorry, it, it, it ran away from me. Okay, control C. Okay, so it's, it's an IP version six and the same deal with IP version uh, four. It, you select that, you expand it. And this is to basically, if you're going to use a specific IP address, but here is where you would add the DNS information right here. Okay, so this is 
basically changing the properties of your network adapter, including the IP address, uh, subnet prefix, all of this, gateway and all this. And if you want to use preferred DNS and alternative DNS, this is where you would put the secondary location of DNS. And yes, you can just type in google.com here. I almost typed in google.com. So if google.com is your DNS you know, provider, you can type that in. Um, I, I think it's actually different. I think it's for Google is uh, like an IP address. Let me see what it is. All right. Google DNS servers. Okay, so here they are. Here they are. Public DNS uh, servers for Google. So you would take this, copy. Again, you shouldn't have to do this manually. There is the first one. And here's the backup. Okay, and then you just click save. Of course, here you have to make sure that you use a correct IP address that's assigned to you and this and that. And that's one way of adding it. Again, you, you shouldn't have to do any of this. All right, now let's go back. One, back one and then look at adapter properties. So this is the beginning. Remember when we went, when we right clicked our icon here and then open network internet settings. And the first time we went to the properties of the internet, and that's one way of doing it. But if you want to look, uh, this is this is how it used to be back in Windows 7. You can still do it. It's just that they don't want it. They, they kind of hide it from people. So you have to make more steps. So if you want to change the adapter settings, meaning your Wi-Fi or, or your Ethernet, you select change adapter options. Okay. And prick the one that you're using. You can have multiple ones. Here is the one that I'm using right now. And uh, it's the same one that we just looked at. So if you right click it and go to properties, okay, type in your, you know, admin password. So what was it that we changed here? We changed, remember we changed IP version six and here it is. We can do the same thing that we just looked at before. And here's the IP version four, if you want to use that as well. So let's just pretend we're doing IP version six again. It doesn't matter. IP version four looks the, the same. Here it is, if you want to add those preferred DNSs right here. Just select this, make sure that's opened up, and then uh, type in, I think I already have, that's the secondary for Google. And the main one is just 88 all throughout. So for some reason, if you ever need to do this for some reason, you can certainly do that and select OK. And I'm assuming that's where you're talking about because actually setting up actual DNS server, uh, what you saw before, like ATT local.net or the one we just added, then that's something else that's way more advanced and then it's not something help desk should worry about. But I highly encourage uh, people to explore this type of knowledge if you have time and if it's something that you understand at this time. If you don't understand what I'm talking about right now, that's okay, still uh, thrive to uh, learn help desk and that way when you learn more computer things the things that you don't understand now you'll be able to understand later and trust me this is kind of funny thing the more you kind of work with computers the more you kind of get how they work and all of this stuff will become easy so i'm just going to reply and i'm going to say you can set up dns servers through adapter settings I'm going to say network adapter settings also please watch my video explaining this X, X, explaining this Perfect. okay since this is not a real ticket this is just explain, explain, explanation thing I'm just going to close it I'm going to move on to more unassigned tickets. So here's another one from Raji. And it uh, looks like he's got two of them that talk about internet access and one for firewall. And there's another one. Well, that's somebody else. Okay. Okay. And that's okay. We'll get back to all of these, I think. I think that's either four or five tickets that we worked on and I don't want to make this video more than 
about an hour long. This one is actually a little bit longer than you, my usual 45 minutes. And I know you guys have specific amount of time. Thank you so much for watching. Please submit more tickets. I will put a link again in the first comment that you see pinned by yours truly, meaning me. And uh, thank you all, uh, all people that became members. It's really appreciated. It's not necessary, but I think, but I give a special thank to uh, people that became members of the channel. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't let anything stress you out. Uh, just stay positive and learn as much as you can. And I'm sure you can work these jobs. This stuff is easy, guys. You just There's just a lot to learn, but it, none of this is uh, complex. And anybody who at least remembers the troubleshooting steps can definitely work Help Desk. That's it. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.